So good evening everyone. Today we will be continuing with uh, optical microscopy. So we have initially uh, in the uh, on the first day we covered about uh, the basics of the optical microscope. We talked about the limit of uh, resolution and what is the resolving power and uh, how wavelength and the resolving power it is uh, related and all these things. Then we talked about the different parts of a uh, this microscope. Then uh, we had this uh, uh, this light source and all these things. Then we talked about these uh, immersion mediums. Uh, then we talked about the condensers. Then we also talked about uh, uh, these. Uh, what are the different types of microscopes and the cameras? And then we also talked about this inverted microscope and all these things, right? Uh, then uh, we talked about this reflection microscope, uh, how the reflection microscope is um, different from that of the uh, this uh, normal upright microscope and we have discussed about this. Then we talked about the bright field illumination and cross polarized illumination and uh, we have seen the, how the background in the bright field illumination and cross polarized illum uh, light illumination microscopes, so they differ. <clears throat> then we talked about uh, what is the configuration of a polarized light microscope uh, where uh, these uh, polarizers and the analyzers they are being put and all these things right then uh, we also talked about dark field illumination and we discussed how it is different from the normal uh, normal polarized light illumination now <clears throat> uh, we have also talked about uh, this um, the architecture of the dark field a uh, microscopic system. Now next we were to discuss about uh, this uh, phase contrast microscopy. OK, so what is a phase contrast microscope? OK, now this is one of the important uh, parameter. So in a <clears throat> typical phase contrast microscope, uh, if you see it would look something like our normal bright field microscope. Okay. However, if you see here in there is a special type of condenser and this condenser it would house a condenser annulus which is similar to the dark field filter or patch. Okay. Then <clears throat> through this dark field filter and patch if you see we have discussed uh, previously in our uh, previous class that the light from this annulus it passes through okay and when it is passing through the system uh, and when it uh, falls onto the uh, what you call onto the slide it forms a v shaped light and in between there are no light right why that happens that happens due to the presence of this dark field patch stop which prevents the light from this region where our this uh, dark field patch is present uh, from there it does not allow the light to pass through and due to this reason we get a conical shaped um, uh, light system and it appears something like this okay now we also uh, we have also seen that in a uh, bright field system if we uh, keep a paper on to the mechanical stage it would look something like this in that in the whole region we are having the bright um, light however when we apply the uh, uh, this dark field patch stop in that case if you see the central part it is dark okay and why it is dark this is dark because we have applied a uh, stop filter so that the light from the central portion of the light source it does not reach the objective okay now the same thing happens over here also if you see in this case what is happening over here if you look over here we are having this condenser annulus okay 
now the light from this part only where the annulus is being formed that is gaining entry into the condenser now this condenser this is the condenser system now this is focusing the light onto the specimen or we can say onto the sample now when this light is being focused onto the specimen there may be two possibilities the first possibility is that the light it will pass unhindered through the specimen because if you make a specimen you will find any types of specimen there is a possibility that there will be some fibers or whatever so through some portions the light they are passing as it is whereas there will be certain regions which will be refracting the light okay so if you see the dark red color line let me change the color of the pen this dark red color line it is passing as it is and it is getting um, what to call access directly to the objective lens okay so this dark red line these are basically unrefracted light unrefracted light from the sample so when it is passing through the sample this light it is not getting refracted however the light shaded pink lights over here and here these are refracted lights okay these are refracted light now within this objective when we talk about this phase contrast microscope within this objective there is a uh, there is an inbuilt plate which is called phase plate and it looks something like this so in this phase plate if you see this darker shade region it is responsible for the uh, alteration in the uh, the light which light the unrefracted light so this phase ring this ring this dark colored shaded uh, ring it is called phase ring it is responsible to alter the properties of the unrefracted light however in between this green shaded area which i am drawing with the pen this green shaded area and also the outer green shaded area both the inner and the outer green shaded areas they allow the refracted light to pass as it is okay so what do we have till now we have the thing that while the light is passing through the condenser before that we apply a patch stop filter so that only the light in the form of annulus it gains entry into the condenser from there that light interacts with the specimen and when it is interacting with the specimen there can be two possibilities the first possibility is that the light passes as it is that means there is no refraction and in the second case there is a refraction now the unrefracted light it passes the phase of the phase plate which is present within the objective whereas the refracted light they uh, pass through the inner area or the outer area of the phase ring okay now this phase ring it is basically if you see it is made up of 
two layers. First one, it is the retention filter, and the second one is the gray filter. Okay. Now, this retention filter and the gray filter, they have specific um, objectives. Okay. The gray filter it dims the light to avoid irradiation, whereas the retention plate it retards the phase of the non-refracted light. Okay, so while the non-refracted or the unrefracted light it passes through the phase ring, within the phase ring there are uh, two types of uh, materials or two types of um, objects which are present. One is called the retention plate. What this retention plate does? This retention plate it alters the phase of the light. Okay, so if you see there is a change in the phase, and also uh, which uh, uh, which part it uh, imparts this uh, change in the phase? The gray filter it. Inducts or it um, induces the change in the phase. Okay, the gray filter it induces the change in the phase, whereas the retention plate it reduces the intensity. Intensity of light. Okay. <clears throat> Now, since there is change in the phase and also the amplitude, what happens is that there is destructive interference at some locations. Okay, so um, as the total phase shift between the light reflected by the specimen and the light that passed by the phase ring will be up to half of lambda. There occurs a destructive interference. Okay, now optically dense structure will consequently appear darker in the case of positive phase contrast. So the thing is that the optically dense structures they will be consequently appearing darker when we are performing this positive phase contrast microscopy. Now this is what if you see in the dark field illumination. Uh, when we performed the system over there also if you see there is an increase in the contrast between the background and the foreground the similar kind of thing it is also happening in the phase contrast illumination however if you see now the foreground in this region it is darker okay however in the case of dark field microscopy our foreground it was brighter okay also if you compare it with this uh, cross polarized microscopy if you see in the cross polarized microscopy the overall uh, overall the image is darker than the bright field microscopy okay and in the bright field microscopy if you see the images of the foreground they appear as darker. However, in the cross polarized microscopy, if you see the foreground, it is brighter. On an overall scale, if you see it is darker, but the foreground material or the objects, they appear as brighter. Okay. Dark field, again, it is brighter. However, in the phase contrast illumination, the foreground objects they are darker which is similar to the normal upright uh, bright field microscopy okay now <clears throat> if you see over here uh, we have discussed this here we have also discussed uh, this thing uh, do you have any uh, questions over here what is happening in the phase contrast microscopy no okay Let's move forward. So, yeah. So, uh, this is the phase plate or the ring of the phase plate. Uh, when you 
and take out the objective and if you see it looks something like this okay and then uh, a phase contrast turret it would be having uh, a turret or the condenser basically okay this is the condenser turret it would be something like this and if you see for each objective this annulus it differs markedly okay depending upon at what objective you are using the uh, phase contrast over there you will be having this kind of uh, different kind of um, what you call it, dimensions for the stock diet okay or the stock filter <clears throat> now we have also discussed about the reflection microscope so we have already discussed about uh, that that uh, our illumination system and the uh, visualization system they are on the same side of the uh, sample so if you see we are having light so then we have this condenser aperture and diaphragm then we have field diagram and all these things then we have the condenser then <laughs> there is an optic mechanism which passes the light uh, through the objective onto the sample and again through the light uh, uh, the, through this objective sorry uh, through this objective the light goes back into the ip system okay now <clears throat> just like in upright uh, microscope the reflected light microscope they also have the similar contrast mechanism okay so this is the normal uh, bright field configuration in the reflected light in the microscopy then in the dark field microscopy if you see the light from the middle it is not being uh, projected if you see there is an illumination side the, and this whole light it is being made incident onto the surface however in the dark field configuration only light if you consider this as the source only this um, shaded region um, portion of the light it will be made incident onto the sample okay <clears throat> then reflected polarized light configuration we have already discussed <clears throat> in the bright field we have the light source <coughs> then uh, there will be diffuser and all these things then we will be having the polarizer then we may have the condenser condenser then we will be having the sample <coughs> then uh, we will be having the objective <coughs> then apart from this objective we will be having one uh, <coughs> excuse me we will be having the analyzer which is again a polarizing sheet then we will be having the eyepiece eyepiece this is objective <coughs> now in this case also if you see <coughs> just after the light source we are having this polarizer then it is going through this objective lens after the um, light uh, specimen is being illuminated from here the uh, light is again reflected back into the objective system then over there we have the analyzer that means one polarizing sheet it would be before the light strikes the specimen and then after the light strikes the specimen we will be having the analyzer and then it will go to the uh, ips lens then we have another type of microscopy which is called dic microscopy now in this dic microscopy it helps us in uh, uh, what you call in creating a 3d effect sorry 3d effect um, on the image now we have not discussed about the 3d effect um, in the upright microscopy so uh, next we will be discussing about this dic microscopy and after uh, we uh, finish discussing this then you will be able to correlate the analogy with this uh, on this reflected light microscopy okay this is the basics uh, this uh, slide it shows the basics of dic microscopy so let's look into the uh, 
figure which is on the right hand side okay so we have a light then we have a condenser then after this condition we have a polarizer now when we have a polarizer over here so it is basically giving us uh, this uh, electromagnetic waves at a 45 degree angle so then this polarized light it is being sent through normaski prism okay now if you look into the polarized light it is says it is having an electric field at a 45 degree angle now what this normaski prism does is that if you consider the electrical fields now the electrical fields it can be in the 0 degree also it can be in the 90 degree now this normalsky prism what it does is that it bifurcates this 45 degree light into 0 degree polarized light and 90 degree polarized light okay what does this mean this means that initially uh, uh, what we are having we are having a light which is uh, which is having an electrical field at 45 degree angle now once the light passes uh, through this we basically we are what we are doing we are fragmenting this electrical light says that there is a there is an electrical field at the 0 degree angle and there is an electrical field at the 90 degree angle okay so what we are having basically we are having a sinusoidal wave like this and we are having a sinusoidal wave like this so if you see there is an electrical field which is in the y direction suppose this is the y direction and this is the x direction and both of this they are 90 degree apart so if we consider this x direction as the 0 degree so our one of the uh, plane would be in the this x direction the electrical field will vary whereas in the y direction we will be having another electrical field so this normalsky prism it is fragmenting a plane polarized light into two uh, two uh, relatively polarized light which are 90 degree apart so initially if you consider that there is a plane say at this 45 degree so initially our resultant uh, this electrical field it was varying at this 45 degree angle okay are you getting my point <clears throat> this dsc microscopy it is bit confusing please let me know if you are uh, what i have uh, told you you have understood this or not where you have not understood so this angle 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 part like <clears throat> now when you have a uh, polarizer you have a 45 degree polarizer uh, this thing so now if you consider and x y and suppose a uh, x y plane so this is x plane this is y plane okay now this is an electrical uh, the electrical field vector it may appear uh, in this x axis or y axis so this x uh, x axis i have shown over here this light if you see this in i have shown in in green it may vary in the x direction okay in the case of y the electrical field may appear in the y direction okay now <clears throat> when we mean 45 degree angle so at the 45 degree also there will be one uh, plane there can be a plane 
okay say for example you have a notebook okay you have this notebook say for example now you can open the notebook and when you open the notebook there will be two planes one will be lying on your table or whatever you want to open uh, where uh, wherever you are keeping it and one will be at the 90 degree angle then if you take one page and if you keep it at a 45 degree angle there can be another plane over here suppose this page it is at 45 degree angle it is clear now now when what i am saying is that when we are passing the light which is an electromagnetic light emr and we are passing it uh, through a 45 degree polarizer so there is an electrical field at this plane where you are having this single page okay is it clear yes sir right now when you are passing this plane polarized light through this normaski prism it is decomposing this 45 degree light into two lights where you are you are having polarizability at 0 degree because when your all the books were closed along this axis you are having zero degree so there can be at this uh, plane which is stuck to your base there can be one plane so electromagnetic field can be appearing at this plane also okay and there will be another uh, light or another plane at the 90 degree angle and there will be some components at this 90 degree okay so what it is basically doing this what is normaski prism it is breaking the plane polarized light into uh, two polarized light having electromagnetic radiations at 90 degree angle and 0 degree angle now you can think of 90 plus 0 degree divided by 2 when you do the averaging it is having the 45 degree yeah so <clears throat> when you are having some electrical field in this direction and some electrical field in this direction there would be some effective uh, electrical field at 45 degree angle right now what it is doing it is creating a difference within this 0 degree and 90 degree plane polarized light 0 uh, degree and 90 degree uh, electromagnetic field such that we get a 0 degree polarized light and a 90 degree polarized light now how it is doing it is basically doing it by inducing some phase shift and inducing some shear distance now if you see over here what i have done is that over here i have shown you say x direction y direction and then suppose this is the z direction okay so we are having this 90 degree angle and if you see the origin of both the systems they are same and if you see they are in the same phase if you look over here they are in the same phase when <coughs> at the origin and the z direction when our the sinusoid it is at minimum the x emr the x direction emr it is uh, the minimum the y direction emr it uh, it is also a minimum value when it is going to the maximum one this y direction value it is also going to the maximum when x direction is again going to the minimum one the y direction value it is also going to the minimum value and so on so they are 
totally in phase. Okay, so this x and y direction electromagnetic radiations, they are in phase. However, when we are um, in phase and both of them, they are uh, conjoined. Okay, at a in the z direction. So when we are talking about this normaski prism, what it does is that. these two points okay now when aggregating see now this z direction in both these cases they are apart there is a distance in between these two planes now this distance between the x plane and the y plane it is called the shear distance this is called the shear distance okay now in one of these you are having this in the y plane say for example in the x plane now if you see now over here and if you look over here so what has happened there is a difference in the phase so we have introduce two things the normaski prism it is creating a shear distance so there is a distance between the two planes also there is a change in the phase between the two lights okay initially what we told initially we started with <coughs> we have started with 45 degree angle then i told you that it was broken down into two components this 45 degree electromagnetic radiations it was broken down into 0 degree polarized light and 90 degree polarized light now third i am telling within this polarized lights there is a shear distance okay fourth i am telling there is a phase difference okay so you are having so many things so we have started with 45 degree polarized light then this normal excuse prism what it has done it has uh, <coughs> it has uh, uh, broken down the electrical fields into 0 degree and 90 degree and one of the, the rays it is called e ray and the other ray it is called the o ray o ray means uh, ordinary ray and e ray means extraordinary rays so extraordinary rays they are always um, perpendicular to the ordinary rays now if you see two types of wave front or the light front have been created so as if you have used two sources of light okay you have created two sources of light okay now what is the front of the movement of this waves the wave fronts for this y wave it would be like this and for this x wave it will be like this okay now if we look into cross sectional area so i am erasing all of this so so from up to here we can see that say we are having the e ray and then say we are we are having the o ray prior to this say we are having this 
plane polarized light. Okay, we are having this plane polarized light after passing through the normal scape prism. We got E ray and O ray. Now this is shear distance, and this is the phase. Okay. Now next thing, what it would come across? It would come across some sample. Now when these rays, E ray and O ray, they are passing through the sample specimen, there will be a retardation in the speed of light okay when there is a retardation in the speed of light I hope you have understood. So there is a retardation of the Y. So there is a, if you see the wave fronts over here, there is a significant distortion of the light. Sorry, now this a little bit would be, it would be something like this. Okay. Now, after it has interacted with the sample, if you see, again it is passing through the normal scape prism. And now, when it is passing through the normal scape prism, what it is doing is that it is removing the uh, these phase components. And when you are removing this phase component, they are getting aligned. So, if you see, there is a destructive interference over here and there is a change in the, uh, what you call, uh, in the uh, values over here, okay. So, at this direction where there is a destructive interference, the image, it would be darker. Whereas where we are having this uh, gap between the two wave fronts, we will be having a brighter region. So if we consider, if we take this thing and if we try to image on this side, you will find that the image is darker. Okay. Now why that is happening? This is happening because you have done all of this, right? Now, if you see, we have attached a polarizer at. This is happening like this. Now, this radiation, it is uh, this rays. These are being passed through the analyzer, which is again and another uh, polarizer, which is at 135 degree angle. And if you see. The polarizer <coughs> and the analyzer, 
they are 90 degree apart that means they are at cross polarized they are being arranged in cross polarized manner now when they are arranged in cross polarized manner so <clears throat> when there is an recombination of these lights through this uh, normal skip prism so what is, is happening is that only the light which have been which are present within these wavefronts as uh, this 45 uh, in the 45 degree angle they will be completely shut off okay because when there is an interaction with the material the material it is refracting the lights or the electromagnetic radiations in different directions and when there is a combination of these things apart from this 45 degree plane this thing which is being marked with uh, these black lines this 45 degree angle there may be some this uh, 45 degree this things light however there will be various other electromagnetic rays which will be in the different directions uh, let me draw it in green okay so apart from this 45 degree plane 0 to say less than 45 degree and higher than 45 degree to 90 degree angles there will be certain uh, electromagnetic rays EMRs, which will be available and they will only be able to pass through this polarizer and they will be gaining uh, will be getting to the IPs from where you can image it now as I told you over here when it is being combined there will be some destructive interference over here and the area where there is a destructive interference the area would be looking as darker whereas the other side it will be looking as the brighter and that too within the same object area even though the light it is being interacting with the object uh, with the same object it would appear that one of the sides of the object is darker as compared to the other side and this uh, uh, results or this gives us a 3D effect into our micrographs. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's see. So we have the unpolarized light, then condenser, then we have this polarizer. 45 degree angle if you see at the 45 degree angle there is electromagnetic radiation then we have this Normansky prism and when we are having this Normansky prism we are having two types of polarized light one is a zero degree polarized light and this 90 degrees polarized light then these both types of polarized light they are interacting with the samples and when they are interacting with the samples uh, so we are again getting uh, some zero degree polarized light and there would be some other uh, 90 degree uh, polarized light where there may be some phase shifting by the samples then there would be objective lens then once we have this uh, things it goes through this uh, uh, normansky prison again and uh, then we will be uh, having uh, a combination of these polarized lights over here and then we have this polarizing filter 135 degrees uh, angle which directly removes the transmitted light that is 45 degree transmitted light which has not interacted with the samples using that we uh, or we uh, get all the lights uh, which are not at 45 degree angle okay so in this way we create a uh, create a 3d effect onto the micrographs 
please remember it is creating a 3d effect however the micrograph it is a 2d image it is just giving you a perception of 3d effect it is not giving you a perception it it is not actually giving you the 3d image okay please keep this in mind <coughs> So this is the explanation of what I was uh, telling you. Now, uh, how much time is left? Uh, four minutes. Okay, maybe we can discuss about the stereo microscope. In this stereo microscope, I have discussed uh, over uh, previously over uh, you that both the eyepieces they gives you different uh, images. If you see on the stereo microscopes. Both the objective and the eyepiece lenses over here, they are having two separate sets. Okay, so there would be two objective lenses. There would be uh, two what you call eyepiece lenses and everything. So you can divide it into um, two sections. One would be having uh, one would be giving you information about. Uh, um, a slight, uh, one side of the objectives would be giving or uh, the optics it, it would give you slightly different information as compared to the other okay and this arrangement it produces a three dimensional visualization of the samples okay now uh, next is uh, fluorescent microscope uh, maybe we can also uh, discuss about this one also in short so if you see there is a light source and uh, we know that in a light source it will give you a polychromatic light and then you are having an excitation filter this excitation filter it will convert this light polychromatic light into monochromatic light now this monochromatic light it will go and uh, through the objective onto the specimen it will interact over there and after interacting there will be a fluorescence fluorescence means this light it would be at higher wavelength okay now this higher wavelength light and also the light which has been made incident onto the sample they will go uh, through the system and they will pass to the dichroic mirror over here and once they pass to the dichroic uh, mirror uh, some of the light will be passed uh, through it and then the past light it will go through the emission filter now this emission filter it will only allow the fluorescence light to pass through it however it will block this uh, uh, excitation light okay and then through the ocular eyepiece you will get to the detector and, <clears throat> and this is a typical upright fluorescence uh, uh, microscope okay <sighs> so with and yeah so which uh, type of filter you need to study again we have talked about the color wheel previously so if you want to block this uh, blue uh, light or the uv the light you need to use the yellow filter or vice versa now these are some of the fluorescence uh, images uh, so if you see there are different colors there is blue color there is um, green color there are red color so for each of this you need to create uh, uh, you need to use different types of uh, um, this excitation and <clears throat> this uh, excitation filter and a and the emission filter okay so by using the different sets of uh, excitation and the uh, emission filter you can take images at uh, different uh, what you call combinations of the filters and then after you have taken the image you have taken the image at the same location so uh, using the software you can go for the merging of all these images so this is not created uh, this image it is not created um, uh, with the operation of the microscope however it is being created uh, digitally after you have taken all the images in the different planes and then you combine all these three images so that's how you get a combined image and this type of image it is called uh, fluorescence merged image okay or merged image uh, as a whole okay so this image it is basically a merged fluorescence image okay 
<coughs> now this i will talk later on uh, in the next class tomorrow we can discuss it uh, do you have any questions uh, sir the fluorescence it doesn't um, like no. it, it doesn't get reflected by the dichroic mirror 25th number which one the slide 25th uh, slide you were showing something uh, I didn't get your uh, question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, fluorescence. It does not uh, reflect the uh, on the dichroic mirror. Uh, mirror, as I told you previously, that hmm. it is a 50-50 mirror. Okay. So when this light is uh, monochromatic light, it falls on the uh, dichroic mirror. 50% of the light is being uh, passed through the object, and 50% of the light it mm, it is basically wasted. Okay. Secondly, <clears throat> when you come over here, uh, it strikes the sample. You have the fluorescence. The fluorescence light comes over here. Again, 50% will go upwards and 50% will be wasted. Okay, that light will be wasted. Now, take some light along with this because this light it has come over here. There might be some light, this monochromatic light, which will also gain entered over here. It will come towards this emission filter, a certain portion of the uh, this uh, monochromatic light. Right now, you have applied a applied an emission filter so that it can only collect the lights which are of higher wavelength. Okay. Are you getting my point? Yes. Because when you talk about this UV visible, uh, this uh, same blue light, it is having uh, or the violet light, it is having uh, what you call uh, uh, the wavelength at around 400 nanometer. OK, so you have used a cutoff frequency, say um, 350 nanometer to 450 nanometer, say for example. OK, so that's why it is allowing only the blue light to come through. OK, now you apply an emission filter, the green uh, wavelength, say it is at 500 nanometer. OK, so you apply this emission filter such that its um, uh, band is say uh, you are having say uh, 450 nanometer to 550 nanometer. So if you see you are having two filters 350 nanometer to 450 nanometer and you are having 450 nanometer to 550 nanometer okay the blue light or the violet light it can pass through the first filter but it will not be able to pass through the second filter now this second filter it will only allow this green light to pass through are you getting my point yes sir it so is only allowing the green light to pass through. just uh, wavelengths are different yeah, what do you mean by filters? Oh, the it will allow the certain frequency of electrical signal uh -huh. to pass through. And yes, here in what we call, uh, what we are the, uh, what we are telling you, we are telling about the excitation filter and the emission filter. However, over here we are basically interested uh, in the light, electromagnetic radiations, EMRs. So uh, these are optical signals you are generating. So these are basically this excitation filter and the emission filter. They are optical filters. They are basically optical filters, right? Now, since they are optical filters, so they will be you know, working in certain frequency. Frequency is related to your, right? So these optical filters, they work in a particular wavelength region. So I have just given you a very bad example, basically. Here in your optical range, it becomes, it comes out to be, and the bandwidth it comes out to be uh, 100 nanometer the width because it uh, this filter works in the range of 350 to 450 nanometer however for these special experiments these filters they have a very small width of say say for example uh, 10 nanometer even we have 
uh, two nano uh, these five nanometer the filters are also there but if you go for this filters the cost is very high okay okay sir. so so suppose if you want uh, say uh, if you want to select 400 nanometer you can use say uh, 390 to 410 nanometer uh, one this thing it will create the uh, this uh, monochromator and then for collecting the signal if you see it is almost in the middle of this green signal it is almost in the middle of the thing so it may be at the 550 nanometer we get the green say for example so you can say you have say 540 to 560 nanometer another uh, optical filter which will be collecting the green light and since it is collecting the green light it will reject this monochromatic light okay yes sir is it yes, clear now yeah. yes sir okay 